Step Kid Radio with Matt McGill. Weekday mornings, 6 until 9 on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Welcome to WVON, Rom. Hey, good morning. How are you? Absolutely wonderful. You know, look, we saw you, uh, my producer and I, we saw you out at Izola's. And I know you're doing the tour. You're hitting every neighborhood. Uh, the city- I, 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 I owe the guys there. Uh, there's a, the three guys, William Moore is one of them, the IBW worker, breakfast after the election. That's right. You sat down with – now, let me let me ask you this because this, this is interesting. I know that you are aware of everything that's going on in the news, the uh, committee, the co- <laughs> coalition. Everything. The, everything. Every <laughs> single thing. The, the coalition that uh, is focusing on a black candidate uh, for uh-huh. the mayor's race, uh, yet you've gone all, all over the city, even though you know there's going to be a candidate coming out of the African-American community. Mm-hmm. And that uh, the African American community is going to be focused on that candidate. That candidate mm-hmm. is going to receive the majority. But does that affect the way you campaign in the African American community? Are we going to continue to see you, you know, on the South and West Sides talking about the issues there? Are we going to continue to hear uh, you, you know, on just, WVON and talking about our issues? Well, first of all, you couldn't be mayor uh, if you didn't campaign, not just campaign all over the city, but to hear the voices all over the city and represent those voices. When you, if you were successful enough in getting elected, uh, on the fifth floor, you have to hear everybody's voice. That's the only way to bring a city this diverse with this much passion for its, for the city and for its future. Uh, you could be an effective mayor. And of course, I'm going to keep campaigning. Just this week, I was in, uh, at the chamber, uh, at the uh, Chatham Chamber of Commerce meeting, and they were talking about and met with a number of business folks there from insurance, uh, companies to, construction to architectural what it is to you know what they need yesterday different part of the city little village met with their chamber i met also with the executives at ford motor company on the far west side i met with uh, a uh, company that manufactures seats for buses uh four generations 500 employees those are the kind of uh, you know manufacturing jobs you want but if i will absolutely Regardless of the sense of oh you're only going to get X vote or you're not going to get you know any votes, I think to be an effective mayor, you not only have to campaign in every part of the city, you have to hear the concerns in every part of the city. So you, when you are elected, you continue to represent and remember those voices because that's why you're there. Wrong. And I say that I say you know I, I, by way of reference, when I got elected uh, to Congress. You know, I continued a tradition, and I got a, I continued a, a, something I basically labeled at the end, Congress on your corner, and I did office hours at grocery stores. So anybody just walking in, a lot of people are just kind of, you know, going through the list, trying to make sure they got picked up on the evening on the way home their, their stuff. A lot of folks came. We worked through issues, whether it was Medicare issues, veterans issues, immigration issues. But we worked through their issues, and then I heard their concerns. And I think it's the way... To never get kind of too distant from the people you're supposed to re- represent and hear their concerns, their issues, and make sure their voices are heard when you get there. Rom Gaynor Hall from WGN TV here. I'm wondering, uh, as you continue this listening tour, what specifically are you hearing from voters on the streets about their concerns and what they're looking for in the next mayor? And how is that going to shape your platform moving forward? Well, I think that uh, there's a group of issues, uh, you know, it's all and it's shared widely throughout the city, regardless of where you are. Obviously, everybody has a different take on it, a different priority. Fundamentally, it's about the economy, their jobs, their, eco- their own economic security. When I was uh, at breakfast uh, that we were just talking about, uh, as well as, uh, uh, if I'm not, uh, William Morris was an IBW worker from Local 134 who had been unemployed two years. Uh, one gentleman did home, uh, you know, construction, fixing up, basically, rehab work, uh, and had his two sons working with him. And the work had slowed. And so economics, in the sense of the most fundamental, either, you know, their own business, as I heard from uh, the family on the west side that had the manufacturing facility, to job security, the ability to afford an education for their uh, children, a college education. Then I would say, followed by that, by, you know, both education in the general sense of our, the quality of our neighborhood schools and then the safety of our streets. And so as I said repeatedly that, uh, you know, the issues we face as a city are the strength of our schools, the safety of our streets, and the stability of our finances. And because so much of our the 
fiscal order of our, the, you know, whether our house, our fiscal house is in order, will determine whether businesses can succeed here, they can open up, expand, or recruit new businesses. But it's from the, their job security to the safety of their streets to the strength of the school, of their neighborhood school. You know, whether we and, like it or not, though, uh, Rob, you know, race is, a, is an issue in, in, in Chicago. And I think, you know, at that same breakfast, I think you, you might remember uh, the other, there was another gentleman who was standing up, Paul Williams, who uh, kind of shouted out a few things about the economy, stimulus, said the right. stimulus money didn't make it down to, I think you remember the gentleman I'm talking about. Right. And his sure. anger, and, and I think you remember, he was angry, he was upset, he wanted he you to frustrated. hear his voice. He's frustrated. But his anger, right. though, represents a black Chicago that feels like it has not been served uh, since Harold Washington was mayor. And, and Mayor Daley did, at times, a masterful job campaigning on these issues. And, you know, I, and I, can, I can run them down to you. 3% black contracts going out to mm -hmm. uh, black businesses. Not, and not just construction contracts. I'm talking about service providers, you know, you know professional know. services as well. Yeah. And, and there's a black Chicago out here that feels like Mayor Daley tap danced around black issues. That, uh, you know, the north side, and I know you're, you're, you're a north sider, that you can go to certain parts of this city, and Chicago is a beautiful city. And I always make this joke on, on the show. I say, yeah, Chicago's a beautiful city. If you live on the north side, you get on that 151 Sheridan bus, you ride down Lakeshore Drive to work, you got the lake on one side and Lincoln Park, beautiful Lincoln Park on the other side. You get off on Michigan Avenue, you got flowers in the middle of the street, you go to work, you eat lunch, you come back home, get on the 151 and go home. It's a beautiful city. But when you get on the red line and you get on the green line and come to work downtown Chicago, you see a different Chicago. How do you address these issues more than just campaign about it? Because that's what the mayor did. No, no, the mayor said, mayor said, we're going to change that 3% for you. It didn't happen. Right. How do you right, talk but, to the people like Paul Williams? Well, first of all, I mean, he, he has a frustration that wasn't, I mean, that goes beyond. And his frustration was about economic security and that the fact is, and he said that, and I remembered it, is mm -hmm. about, they did not feel like the Recovery Act, the stimulus bill, had hit the local community. And then when it did, mm -hmm. the people in that local community did not get a chance to either bid on the work or get the jobs. So when there was, in fact, on that street, if I'm not mistaken, there was construction, but he did not feel like uh, it was workers from not from that community. And, you know, we can have a discussion about, you know, it wasn't designed for like that. But that fact is his frustration was where our voices... Our interests are getting hurt, and we're hurt here more than uh, the average. But the concerns, I want you to know, and yes, on the north side, there's a different economics than on the south side or on the west side. But the aspirations for the same economic security are there. The sense of vulnerability by people, whether it's to pay for their health care, their college education, the mortgage of their home, the security, those are shared. And addressing it may take, obviously, no doubt, takes particular interest in a community and knowing that, in fact, uh, that community uh, or that sense of the community is not uh, being heard. And I will tell you, every issue I've ever faced, I see, and the one thing that has stuck with me in all this campaigning <clears throat> is I have, you know, dealing with city finances, they will be daunting. I've had daunting issues before. Can't ch trying to deal with turning crime around when I've helped pass the Brady Bill or saw what I will be able to look at those and I bring a sense of energy and a commitment and a level of experience. The thing that has intimidated me most in this campaign and still stays with me is when I was on 95th and Dan Ryan at that line greeting commuters and that sense in those kids' eyes that there was no kind of spark, there was no vitality. That, to me, it is what is daunting about this. And there are policy pieces to this, but there's a human element to this that goes beyond policy. And so when you say, you know, when somebody says, you know, you're, you're sure you want this job, given everything that we face as a city, I do want it because I love the city and I care deeply about it. And I think these are, the, we're at a crossroads. None of those challenges, in my opinion, given the size and scope, scare me. The only thing that's given me pause is when I've seen those kids and I don't see something in their eye. But uh, that, to me, right. is the hardest part and giving these sure. uh, kids a sense of hope and opportunity that they can participate in right. their own, and have a direction of their own future 
and have a sense of hope for their own future. Right. That, to me, is what is daunting about this. Step Kid Radio with Matt McGill. Weekday mornings, 6 until 9, on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON.